latest on September 17th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. Hurricane Kiko is weakening in the eastern Pacific, Humberto is somehow a category one and not stronger, and Paper, the remnants of that storm, are really looking very sorry for themselves in the western Pacific. Day 260 so far around the world, September 17th, day 108 in the Atlantic, Humberto moving off towards the east-northeast at this point, Invest 97L with a high chance of development. Day 125 in the Eastern Pacific, Kiko moving out to sea, two invests at the moment that are both likely to develop into tropical cyclones. The remnants of PayPal moving towards the north at this point, not any threat to land. And just a general note really, the whole tropical zone in the northern hemisphere is really um, excited and um, active at this point today. Humberto is the main story, 90 miles per hour, pressure of 965 millibars, probably the best 90 mile per hour storm I've ever seen, but Recon say that the storm is no stronger than that and possibly even a little bit weaker. 645 miles from Bermuda, 30.3 north, 75.5 degree, degrees west. It's likely to move towards the east-northeast over the next few days and will probably become a Category 2 uh, very soon uh, and then past Bermuda, weaken back to a Category 1 again not so long after that. There is still the outside chance, and maybe more than that actually, that it could reach Category 3 status if even National Hurricane Center are forecasting it at this point. Here it is on the uh, wind shear graphic. You can see there that it is uh, marginal but not too shabby for the storm and it's certainly doing well in spite of any high wind shear that it's dealing with um, so that is one thing that the storm is doing well against you can see again the visible imagery there the eye clearing out in those later frames looking at the wide shots then uh, this is the look at the north atlantic in general and boto quite clearly visible there general disturbances moving through the lesser antilles and towards the east there 97 l quite clearly visible there towards the right hand side. Um, a few disturbances behind that as well uh, that some models are eyeing up for potential cyclone development. Gulf of Mexico also has that little system off the coast of Texas 20% chance on that. The East Pacific so you can see uh, Kiko quite clearly there there's a little disturbance towards the southwest there and some models are hinting that Kiko will be interacting quite heavily with that little disturbance and that disturbance itself could develop um, and then you've got the Central Pacific you've got three areas of interest there that are both at low chance according to the Central Pacific Hurricane Center all in all there's about seven systems in the eastern part of the Pacific that have chances of development the West Pacific looks like this um, pretty shabby now looking at the basin as a whole uh, a few flare-ups occurring but apart from paper I really don't see the the invest that we saw yesterday 95 and 98 W there clearing off towards the north the Australian South Pacific region is extremely calm just a few thunderstorms blowing up off Papua New Guinea and a few other thunderstorms in the equatorial part of the South Pacific. The Indian Ocean also very quiet at this point. You can see a few flare-ups occurring in the Bay of Bengal, but apart from that, overland, very few rumblings at all. Sea surface temperatures along the coast of Mexico are very warm, 30 degrees plus. There is hints that one or two systems could form off the coast there and could affect the western part of Mexico. Uh, so that is something we should be watching out for, especially if you're in those areas. The Gulf of Mexico has cooled a little bit, mainly due to that system. Humberto is over around 28 or 29 degrees Celsius waters, very warm. 97L also doing fairly well as well. Um, the Indian Ocean, 28 degrees generally warming up there again and the western pacific fairly warm in the philippine sea but still rather cool compared to east of the mariana islands any new systems that form in the western pacific would have a head start there if they form further east hurricane kiko looks like this not very hurricane like in the latest frames it's not looking very good at all the convection is really in danger of dying off as well uh, which would leave behind the all too familiar exposed center of circulation which we often see in the eastern pacific but don't write it off just yet gfs thinks that it could last uh, regenerate even if it does die and some models don't have it dying at all humberto looking like this on the satellite imagery you can see the eye uh, quite clearly its influence expanding uh, pressure falling 965 millibars yet it is still a category one and i thought we were going to get a normal hurricane at last that hasn't happened 
So here we are on September 17th. The next name on the Atlantic Hurricane list is Imelda. In the Eastern Pacific, it will be Lorena. Over in the Central Pacific on list one, the next name there is Ima. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list over there now is Tapa. And in the North Indian Ocean on list eight, we're looking out for Hika. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far. And you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, search Force 13 on there as well. You can contact us on any of these platforms um, and we'll get back to you. That's all for now. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin, as always, tomorrow. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description.